Welcome to the Crack On Podcast, hosted by me, John Saunders. Crack On! Hey guys, hope you're well. So the finale of Series 2. So we rendered on the high, massive high. I love Russell Slade. So presenting Russell Slade, who is just the man within football management. He's, you know, coach clubs from Cardiff City to Cheltenham. So yeah, just an array of, of coaching skills, but newly the co-founder of Global Sports Data Technology. Uh, such an exciting project, really chuffed to actually be part of that, um, a small part of that with him, just, uh, just but really, really an all round top guy. Can't wait to share it, have a listen. Uh, this was filmed or about two, three weeks ago. So there are gonna be time lags within that, but have a listen. I uh, hope you enjoy. Crack on. Morning, Russ. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very well, very well. On this bank holiday Monday, it's, it's good <laughs> to talk to you. It's a, good job, it's a good job the weather's not hot, because it <laughs> might have been cancelled. Absolutely. If the weather was uh, banging, if we were on the Maldives, I think it'd been another question, mate, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. But we're on the Welsh Riviera, which is, which is normally raining. <laughs> yeah. <isn't it>? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, well, see, thanks, thanks for saying yes. Right, let's get cracking straight into it. Uh, first question I ask everyone, what does crack on mean to you? Oh, stop deliberating, stop talking, stop yeah. thinking, get on with it, do something about, buy a ticket and do something about it. Love that, love that. And any examples with that, that you know, in your, you know, we're going to go through your career anyway, but... Any millions, examples? millions, M millions, because in life <laughs> you've not got a second to waste and on a football pitch or in a changing room, you've not got a second to waste. You need to yeah. get the message out. You need to understand your jobs as an individual or collectively and get on with it. Yeah, love it, love it. Second one then. So yeah, who you know we said about idol. Idol actually, a lot of the, a lot of people I've interviewed find the idol world a bit a bit funny. So mentors, any any yeah. major mentors in your life? Yeah, in in the, in the game, without a shadow of a doubt, the late Howard Kendall, yeah. um, who obviously managed Everton, um, yeah. I think three times. Um, he, he, he was inspirational. Um, he came to Notts County, would you believe? We're in the conference now. We were in the championship. Right. And he came on board when I'd had my first little stint as a young manager, probably only 33, 34 at the time. Thought yeah. I was ready, but nowhere near ready. But after my time, my journey with Howard Kendall, I was ready because his, his management skills his knowledge of the game were absolutely second to none, John. And yeah, um, yeah it, it was fantastic. You'd learn every day the way he handled the changing room, the way he handled individuals. Um, his knowledge was fantastic. Because I bet, I bet you take everything out of football, strip it all back to the basics, like anything, it's people. Absolutely. It, 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 life is about people. Yeah. Um, whether you like it or not, it is. And um, yeah. It's how, it's how you grow those relationships. It's how you can make them work. You don't need to like and be in love with everybody, yeah. but appreciate what they bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, I love that, I love that. And then you mentioned as well, off, off, off the camera, another, another person you really looked up to and learned a lot from? Yeah, it was, was, my, it was my dad, obviously. He passed away um, at the age of 91 in... in October time, um, which yes, was indeed. which was difficult. It's, it's never easy for anybody, no. and I understand that because it's your dad, whether they're whether they're fifty and whether they're ninety, and you know we've been through a difficult time as it is as a as a nation, as a as a as a world. Yeah. Um, but but it, it, the lessons, the lessons he gave me, um, Nick, I had to sort out. You know whether it was it, it, here's one for you. He he, he had yeah. a news agency. Have we got time to do a couple? Maybe we got we've got as much time as you have. You got really make this show okay. like Monday. So. We, 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 <laughs> We had a news agency, so kind of in, in my early, early teens, I'd go and help him, say, after school or the weekends and sell newspapers and cards and everything, really. Yeah. Um, it must have been a festive time because I think he had dressed up the news agency with a bit of decoration, so it was probably Christmas time. Right. Anyway, I, I, was put, I, I was helping him put some of those up. There was a group of boys outside, three or four boys outside on the bikes, um, giving me, giving me, giving me the look. Yeah, um, yeah. And then when it was 
it's time to bring the, the newspapers at that time. This is this is old fashioned. This is showing a bit of age, really. They used to be on a rack outside, so you could see the different newspapers, yeah. which was available, therefore, inside the shop. Uh, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So they're on a big long rack. Uh, yeah, that these yeah. boys decided that they'd open up the rack and start reading a newspaper or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, just as I, I said, I need to take those now, they, uh, a couple of newspapers, they decided just to drop on the floor and they slide <laughs> right. everywhere. So, um, you know, after one comment, I decided to thump one of the lads outside in me wisdom. Um, oh, anyway, one. anyway, that wasn't that wasn't the end of it. It wasn't oh, going right. to go away. And yeah. I'm thinking my dad has not seen any of this, John. Right. I've seen any of this. I've looked yeah. in the shop and he's not seen any of this. It's all right. Yeah. Anyway, we lock up. We lock up and we we, we finished for the yeah. day. We're off home. To, we're off home um, for, for some tea. Um, I've got. It's it's. Uh, I think it's a Friday. So so we've got. So I've got a big bottle of dandelion and burdock and. Um, and a few chocolates to take home yeah. uh, for me, mum. And um, and anyway, these lads are not going away. They're, they're, they're all there. They're waiting for him. And my my old man's gone. Listen, guys, what is it? My, and and he was he boxed in the army. My dad as well, so he could look yeah, after oh, himself. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, as well. But he go, um, he go. Uh, what is it, fellas? What is it you want? He says, Well, we want him. <laughs> what, what, what for? What, you want it, right? So, so I was carrying the dandelion and burdock and the chocolates. So he took the dandelion and burdock off me and the chocolates and went to the car. <laughs> Sat in the car. Brilliant. And so I'm in, I'm in the gutter, yeah. you know, fighting, fighting these guys, having a brawl with these guys, black right. and blue. I eventually, I eventually get in the car. I said, so thanks for that. <laughs> He says, well, you've got to learn to listen. If you want to start something, you can't you can you can't do that as a businessman. Yes. Because he'd obviously seen everything. You yeah. can't go aggravating anybody, even though they're totally in the wrong. Yes. So he said, you've got to, you can't do that. You can't, you, there's different ways to react and deal with situations. And the he biggest said, learning from that then? Yeah. So he said, uh, so he's learned from that. And you've got to learn to fight your own battles. Yeah, that's the end of that's the end of that, son. But that's how he was. It, that's how he was on so many things, John. He yeah. was, uh, and then, and did you know cool. what? There's a lot of lessons learned for this. You know, we live now in a quite openly quite a soft natured uh, society, don't we? And there's a lot of times we can learn from that. I mean, I had an example the other day. My my boy in similar situation got himself into a bit of drama, and he said, "Dad, there's that lad over there." And I said, "Oh yeah, no problem, mate." So what do you want me to do? I'm not doing anything, mate. You sort, you pick this. You'll have to sort it out. But I think that sort of go and fight your own battles. There's a lot of lessons in that in itself, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So absolutely. then take us back then to so football management. You're a humble northern northern guy. Where, where did it all start? It all started. Wow, well, well. I have to go back. I have to go back to my teens, John. Um, right. I was playing. I was playing in a. I was playing for Nottingham show because. Most of my, even though I was born in Wokingham, most of my life, yeah, uh, I was brought up in Nottingham in the Midlands. Um, we 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 had a very good group of players around us, um, of which several went on to. My area was Trevor Morley, who went on to play for West Ham, yeah, and Steve Burke, who played for Nottingham Forest as well. We we're all doing we we're all doing very well. We we're having trials at Manchester United. In fact, at 13, 14, I scored. Uh, on the Old Trafford training ground, we drew 1-1 one, one with them. Um, but I was only very small. Right. No, that's hard to believe, John, but I was I'm only very say, small. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, uh, I, I was about five, I'm six foot one now. I was yeah, about yeah, yeah. five foot five and right. size was always an issue for people. Yeah. They always were looking for that big, strong um, player at, at the age of 15 and 16. So yeah. I kind of missed out. So, Football was everything to me, but I had to make a decision. And it, the decision was, do, do, do I now pull my finger out and mm. go to college and yeah. get the qualifications and do what probably might be the next best thing in life is, is a, a PE teacher, Yeah, which is what I, which is what I trained to do. That's right, yeah. Um, in Edge Hill, was it? Edge Hill, yeah. Edge Hill, Edge Hill College, which yeah. is now a, a university. Yeah. So, so the, the the decision was, and this and this and this is a true fact. On the Sunday, Sunday lunch, on the day I'm due to go, is my last Sunday lunch before 
my dad was taking me up to the college with all my gear and stuff. I got a phone call from Notts County because I was still playing. Yeah, yeah. And they were wanting me to come down. They're very serious. Yeah. The, 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 the guy was called Billy Barracliffe who rang me. Right. Um, and I know the family very well. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I, I, so I sat around the table and my dad says, well, what are you doing then? And I decided to go on to the college. I thought I'd worked so hard yeah. for those qualifications at that time and put football slightly on the back burner, obviously. Yeah. Um, I decided to go to the college and spent, I spent four years, you know, kind of get, getting those qualifications and, and, and doing co coaching in a, a variety of sports, whether it was swimming, basketball, cricket or whatever, tennis. Yeah you know, understanding a lot of sports, not just football. And I had four very good years doing that before I came back and got a teaching job in back in Nottingham. Yeah. But the guy, the guy um, a friend, uh, John Ramshaw, who worked there, was working at Notts County. And, and, and honestly, within months, I was at Notts County uh, taking um, like under 15s and under 18s. And then I was playing in the, in, in the, um, a team and in the reserves regularly, so, and then I venture, and then I obviously went over to Notts County full time playing and coaching. And yeah, caretaker. That's how we all started then. Caretaker. That's how it all started. That's a pot of history. Pot of history of how it started. <laughs> there we go. I was there eleven years at that club. Yeah, brilliant. What a what a great start that must have been. What a club to start at. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Eleven years. And I think the great thing about that is the. In terms of preparation and doing lesson plans and things like that, it, that, yeah. that was all easy because of the four years I'd done and, and, and prepping and understanding and looking at things logically and progressively. Yeah. Um, that was all good. And, and then to, to, to go into the football club and work at every level, John, I worked at every level. I was yeah. assistant youth coach, youth yeah. coach, reserve team manager, assistant manager, manager, back to assistant manager under Howard Kendall. Yeah, eleven years, Potter history. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know what? I think the it's interesting you say the background was sort of teaching, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of really amazing coaches out there that have all had that. Um, you know, you look at Eddie Jones. I'm looking at rugby, but look at Eddie Jones. Yeah. Um, he was yeah. a teacher back in the day and took his learnings from the teaching into the coaching world. It's interesting that. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. It ha it definitely helps you pr prepare to work with individuals, to work with groups, to work with um, large in large areas, small areas, just, just the old coaching thing. You can think, you can think in the moment, you can adjust. Yeah. yeah. And you had yeah, to yeah, in totally. those days. We yeah. had to in those days at Notts County. We, 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 we trained in a kind of like 15 by 20 with one of those old rubber floors oh. with two five aside goals. And then the, the, then the other court was outside. So if it was raining, the goalkeepers that worked on the outside come on the inside. So you had to be, you had to be flexible. You had to work. And we were producing players so, so quickly, you know, it, uh, really good production line of players working in those sorts of areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, the thing is, it's a bit like, like I, I've done, uh, well, I did an Ironman about three, four years ago. And uh, I'll give you a little story quickly on it. I trained with these really old wheels, right? Whoever's a cyclist out, they'll understand what I mean. Really old wheels. But then when I, three weeks before my Ironman, I put these aero ones on. And I I, flew, I was like literally about five seconds faster per hour, whatever it was. But it's a bit like when you train in those back in those days and you're used yes. to those old, you know, the, 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 you know, how, you know, you've seen the change. How much have things changed since those times? Oh, they changed. They, they, they changed. Fantastic, fantastic. In terms of the facilities, John. Yeah, I bet. The, 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 the indoor facilities, the, the, the gym equipment, the programs that the, the um, players are, the young players are on now yeah. are, are diverse and, and they, they try to look at all different elements from, from mental to the physical side and yeah. to, prepare, to prepare the players. It, it's, it, it's much more, you know, and coming in from different angles now. To, How'd, to you make find that? How'd you find that, Russ? How have you found that transition? Because obviously you've been you've been in this game a while and, and you've gone through those, you know, some massive clubs, you know? You know, we're going to... I love the fact you've been to Brighton, I've been in Brighton, you know, Cardiff City, yeah. I'm a Cardiff guy. You know, some real big clubs and, you know, you've seen that, that, that movement and that shift. How much has it literally changed football? No, no, it's, it's changed football immensely, I think. 
you know, in terms of the technical side of the game, for, yeah. for an example, I think I think that's grown um, in, incredibly. I, I think that you know, and there are I think there are some very very good what I would call session coaches now. Right. You know, if, if you to specialize in in dribbling, to specialize in passing, to specialize in different areas of of, of the game. What what I think sometimes we do miss, though, are those old values, yeah. you know, of of, um, yeah. of of which comes from within as well. It's not just down to the coach, but yeah. those are old values of how important certain things are. Like what? Game. Like what? Because I, I I think I know what you're saying. Because I was going to ask you the yeah. question. One of the questions I was going to ask is how, like they say, you know, any of the interviews, Alex Ferguson, um, you know, like uh, Gary Neville or anyone mentions Alex Ferguson in front of his time. People like Pep Guardiola um, and, you know, Klopp and people like that, that are really people focused. They seem to get the results. But, you know, how, how, uh, how the old fashioned, because for me, that is old fashioned management. That is, that person is my player and I work with that player. I mean, I'm really fascinated by that. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. On the one hand, on the one hand, there's there's the person buying into what you're trying to achieve yeah. as an individual, right. as a and as a collective. So there's that side and and that whole work ethic and the sacrifices that are need to be made. And then the, on the other side, there's the man management, which right. is which is huge in the game for me. And sometimes I think some coaches forget that side of it. The yeah. management of people. It's a people's industry. Yeah. You need to know what is going off in that in that player's in that player's head. There are some individuals you can't tackle in front of a group aggressively. Oh. There yeah. are others that will take it on the chin, roll the sleeves up, get out there and perform better. You've got to deal, you've got to know who you're working with, you've got to understand them, and you've got to you've got to have that ability to get the very best out of yeah. them. And then, Not and only have they turn, got to get the very best out themselves, but you've yeah. got to get the very best it, out. And I suppose in turn, getting the very best out of you as a coach, because, and then one of the follow on yeah. questions on that, the, the clubs you've been to, uh, do they do they pick you or do you pick the club? You know, do you ever look, did you ever look at any of those clubs and say, will I fit? Or what, what's the natural process for you when you've looked at those clubs or they've approached you? you no, know, how would you make that decision of where you would go next? It's, that's a that's a really good question, John. Yeah. Particularly particularly when you become, you know, a manager that's moving from from club to club. Yeah. Um, it, it it it's a volatile world, so you know you've got to be careful where you go. But at the same time, uh, the, the, the the same time, there are very few jobs sometimes about. Yeah, so of so you have, you have to go in there with a view to making it kind of work. What yeah. what I do when I go in. Um, because every club is so different, yeah, it all has its, you know, it all has its quirks. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I try, I try to in those very early days, is to weigh up how they, how they, how they do things. You know, it they, they might be administratively, it might be rather than talking, you'll find some of these institutions are kind of so email based you know well, hang on a minute you're in the next room why don't we come in and have a little chat about this let's have a chinwag yeah yeah let's have a chinwag let's sort this out <laughs> um so 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 i find you know so you get you you have to understand the football club and you're not going to understand that thing that's been set for how many years yeah in, in terms of and, and obviously that a lot comes from the ownership and the people at the top of a football club that should take responsibility for that clearly yes. But, but you have to learn very quickly how that works. And as much as I want to put my take on it and how I see it, these things don't happen overnight sometimes. No, 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 they no. really don't. And that's what so, I, that was the other follow-on question was, you know, the, the more and more, obviously money rules the game. I understand money has a big focus on, the, on it. But to me, as an outsider, I'm, I love my sport. But you've got to give the person time. They don't seem to have the time. I mean, that's becoming less and less. Is that is that true to say? Yes, yes. And I think that that affects some people and some and and some coaches more than others. Why why, why do I say that? I say that because um, for myself, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a I'm a builder yeah. of, a, of a football club. Whenever I've 
w w whenever I've had probably a, a year or more, I've either reached the playoffs or I think the lowest I finished is probably is probably eighth. And then there's a couple of couple of seasons in all of that history that yeah. probably were not so were, were not good seasons. But other than, but generally speaking, what I'm saying is I've brought more success to a football club when I've been given the time to yeah, do so. To do Whereas, as you know, some yeah. some managers can go in and they can have a very quick turnaround, mm -hmm. but it doesn't last. So yes. you've got the two sides of it. Um, so what qualities, what qualities in a club? We're not looking specific club. And, you know, if you want to talk specific clubs, we can. But what qualities are you looking in a club? When you sit there and say, right, you've had the offer through, what qualities have they got to have? What, what mandatory ones have they got to have for, for Russell to even look at it? OK, OK. What I've learned, all right, the best that your, your relationship with the most important person, which in my opinion is the owner or the chairman, yes, is absolutely vital. Yes. So there's everything else going on going on around the building, yeah. uh, during the game, after the game, all week. But that relationship yeah. is absolutely massive. Yeah. Um, and the best relationship I've had, I can categorically tell you, is Barry Hearn. Right. Brilliant. Okay. Who loves it? Who loves his sport? He'd yeah. be the first to admit he doesn't know loads about football. Yeah. But the one quality, John, he's got is this. He makes you feel, right, that you're always working with him, not for him. Yeah, that's pretty And that's a very big difference yeah, yeah, between yeah. him and a lot of people in football. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's such a great quality, mate, isn't it? Such a great quality. Massively. And I take it you, you know, when I talk relationships outside, you, you, I bet you're very close with them now still. Yeah, absolutely. We, we could pick up the phone. In fact, I did. But then, unfortunately, he fell, he fell ill. We were going to meet up probably about, I think it was about five, six months ago. Right. We were going to have a meet up, a catch up, but yeah. obviously the pandemic as well. But yeah, it won't be long before hopefully we do that again. And, and it'll be just like old days with us. You know, yeah, yeah, just, he's, so, he's so honest. He says it as it is. And. And, and that's how I like it. it, it your budget is what it is. Um, it'll support you if they're, but you do other things. You do other yeah. things, John. Like, right. there you go. Do you want to take the players to the fight night? Do you, want, do, you, do, you want them, do you want them to go to the darts, get them together? Is there anything I can do like that? He would do that. He, yeah, he'd, give, he'd give this uh, at Christmas, he'd give the staff, there'd be a financial bonus. There you go for Christmas. There you go. Well done. Nice. He, oh, he just, he just touches, did things. It? Small touches. Yeah. Little touches all the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we so went to see. Vegas. We went to Vegas. Really? He says, if you can, if you can get, if we can, if we can't beat Arsenal, but we can get the draw, which will bring in close to a million pounds for us, which it yeah. did, and we get a replay, which we did. Yeah. We're going to Vegas. We went to Vegas. Awesome. That's pretty much goes on in Vegas, stays in Vegas, as they say. Of course. <laughs> yeah. No, but those sort of relationships. I mean, people that are sat here listening to this podcast. I mean, they're in a business. They're in a you know that relate. I I, you know, I totally and utterly agree with that relationship. And it's and it's throughout. It's not just football. That is it. It's about life generally. You've got to be able to run that venue if you've got the money or not. You've got to make sure it feels like it's a partnership, not a one way, not a one way street. Yeah, because that because that's the only way, in my opinion, John. It yes. can lead to success. I agree. Because you can't do it. You can't be as as much as you'd like to be, Pe Pepe, whoever you are. Um, you, you can't do it on your own. Yeah. It's impossible. No, 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 I agree. I sort of, well, but you can't be everywhere. You can't be everywhere. You can't be dealing with it. You need good people. You need the staffing around you, don't you? You need to yeah. tr tr uh, staff that you can trust and, re and rely on that are putting out your message, not their message, yeah. your message. And, and, on that, and on that with them with the team, did you have a set team that followed you through your, your coaching career? Have you ever had people, you know, have you had people that followed you club to club? Or have you always been quite a freshen it up, you know, develop a team type person? I've had both. I've, right. I've, I've taken, w w when possible, I've taken um, staff that I've had before, like Kevin Nugent. Yeah, um, oh, he's a top guy, Kevin, Kevin. Top guy, Kev. Kev came to, um, Kev came to Charlton with me. Yeah. Um, I couldn't at the time take him to uh, Cardiff, but that was fine. So you have to adapt again. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You have to adapt again. And, and work with the staff, find their strengths and weaknesses to so you can position that a little bit as well. Yeah. Is, is, is he strong on the coaching side? Is he strong on the analytical side? That that sort of thing. It's just you have to weigh all that up as well. Yeah, and your team then you know you're only as good as your team. Yes, 
absolutely absolutely and that's and, that, and that's the whole point you need you, you need your backroom team so you've yeah. got that team and then you need your team on the pitch and it's all yeah, about well, bringing up it's all about bringing all that together and yeah, getting the well, best maybe, out of each other something that this is quite these are all sort of quite personal questions i've always wanted i've always wanted to ask a coach but how well, you know, you've got a whole host of players you could check and select from. Yes, I understand his budgets and his, you know, different money that you've got. How do you, have you got a, a way through your career that you've selected players? Again, I know we're going to go into three non-negotiables for Russell State, but what, what qualities do you look for in a player? First of all, meet them, John. Right. Eyeball them. Yeah. Sit down and have a chat with them. That's that can't always be possible. Understand that there's somebody might be abroad, but I think it's very important to 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 talk to them, get an idea of where they're at, talk about the talk to un, understand their life. Have they got a, have they got a family? How, how's it all? How's it all work? Where are they living? Will they move? All all, all the logistics and everything yeah, around yeah. them and their own personal to understand them as quickly as you possibly can. And I pride myself on getting that type, that that side of it right, to see whether they're a good fit. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's important yeah. that they're a good fit. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I totally agree. And maybe, you know, and I think that that, that is in such an important level, isn't it? Because if you look in their eyes yeah. and they're not ready for it, then obviously yeah. it's not for you. Yeah, clearly, are they talented? Have they got this? Is it the position you're looking for? Of course, all that's done. I say, all been I'm ticked. a nice guy. Can you sign me on then, please? Yeah. <laughs> they're all, all ticked. I got two left feet, but I, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I do. I'll tell you what, though, I bring on an awesome orange at half time. So if you want that, that person, I'm there for you, mate. There you go. Brilliant. <laughs> so what, Brilliant. what else then? So, I mean, the other question I had was half time. So that moment you've come in, you know, your management style, what sort of manager would you say you are? Okay, I'll tell you what I, I, how I developed o, o, over time. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've got, your, you've got your, your technical side, your tactical side that, that you're working on throughout the week for the, for the team, for the team that you're going to pick and for the team that you're going to play against on yeah. the Tuesday night or, or, or on, on the Saturday. So de depending on the opposition to an extent as well, in, 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 because it, with, with some teams, they might be very, very different the way they play or whatever. So tactically, there's a lot of work that needs to go on before, prior to the game to get that right. So everybody, it's very important that in any team anyway, that everybody knows their own job and you know his job as well and what he's responsible for on the pitch. Yeah. So that. So what I what what I so what I do, John. What I started doing. I would write my own team talks as well. So I, I wouldn't go in there with a piece of paper like that and and then just do. I would I, I would kind of like I've, I've I've four or five looks at it to understand it. But I'd split it up, and that that match day kind of team talk would be based on would be based on keywords that I've used in the training. Yeah. It would be how how technically it would be would depend on the opposition. Okay, that's interesting. So I go through three. If it wasn't, if 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 there was not so much uh, need for the technical, but more for like, hey, it's about our mental side today. We yeah. need to be on it. We need to be full of energy. We need to be after these teams. Then, yeah. then it could be more kind of, if you like, motivational, inspirational yeah, yeah, that yeah. way. So you the mean, balance of that pumped, team. Ball, Yes, but 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 the point the point of kind of recording and knowing what I've said as well is that was useful in, in knowing what 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 I'd said to them in that game. So when we play them again, and yeah. how we, did it was it successful? Wasn't it successful? And learning from those team talks and those messages that we put out for the players was was important, and and the delivery of those. So it, I thought it was a you and also. Made, made, it made, made sure I wasn't like some managers or coaches talking the same shit week in and week out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And can you remember one specific one? I know that's probably a million dollar question, but can you remember one specific one that you, you know, before the game or during the game or half time where it just had, had the biggest impact? Um, or yeah, a team, probably. That, a team that you've beaten that, that you just thought, I tell you what, I got that bob on. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. At a, at, at Cardiff, um, when when it was getting tight, will we get in the playoffs or not? At, at Wolverhampton, um, you know, we really, really needed a result. Yeah. And I told the players that I'd be looking at every single one of them in the eye after the 90 minutes. And we'd really, inter that was a that was an example of, of kind of like, not so much a technical team talk about what needs to happen, although we had worked on that, obviously, in training, yeah. but about our approach to the game and making sure we were bang on. We won the game 4-1 yeah. away from home. And I bet you've got, um, I bet you've got a few examples of when it didn't work out, because obviously it works out a lot of the time there's highs, but there's also a lot of lows in football, isn't there? Uh, absolutely. John, I can give you an example of a playoff final again against um, Rotherham, where... I'd, I'd, I'd done all the team talk. We were two 0 up at half time. Right. And then second half had a okay. The, there were there were always reasons. A player came off. He wasn't feeling so well. He was sick. I didn't yeah. want to lose him at that time. These things happen in football. And then we gone and then we drew two two and lost on a penalty shootout. Right. So so it, it can yeah. You're right. Absolutely right. It, you know it doesn't so it doesn't mean, always pay off. I mean you've gone into that route, so it's really good. Like Bobby asked another question on it. Learnings from those. That, those lows, because you obviously that that must have been one kick in the in the, in the nuts, isn't it? You know, what yeah. you learn from them, Russ. Yeah, yeah, no, it hard, hard, yeah. and 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 when when you think when you think back at them now, it's still hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, easy, doesn't get doesn't you get. You, you know, but what did you do after those sort of ones? You know, how did you approach it after that? Was it dust yourself down, get on with it, get you know? What was your what was your? How did you pick the lads up after that? Um. Well, it it wasn't easy anyway because I, because about eight games in in the new season, um, which was a very modest start. I think we'd won two, drawn four, lost two, so right. it was a really average start. Yeah. I, I I had the opportunity to go to Cardiff, so of I thought that, but but that wasn't because that wasn't because of the losing in the playoff final or all the players there. There was a change in ownership. Right. That was when the Italian guy came in. Yeah, and he, and after a few discussions with him, he wasn't for me. No, I know, and, and and you find that. I bet you found yeah. that throughout it. Like you said earlier on, it's got to fit. It's got to sit right. Yes, and you can sort of see, you know, when I, I bet you know when you've joined a few of the clubs. I mean, you came to Cardiff in a really tough time as well, wouldn't it? You know, uh, yeah. Solskjaer gone and those big high-profile bits. When you know they, they must be, you know, the pressure must be. How do you handle that pressure? I'm okay. I'm I'm not too bad with the pressure. I, I don't think. I mean, that, that that'll be probably for for your assistant managers and your, <laughs> your, your players to assess you on that, really. <laughs> um, but you just you just have to. I never. What why I never do is I never look over my shoulder. Yeah. Never think. Well, you, you have to move. You have to move forward. You can't spend too much time. Yeah. Because you can't affect what's happened. Even oh. five minutes ago, can you? Never mind five days ago or five. You can't affect it, you, no. but you can affect what's in front of you. And yeah. that's always been kind of my way of looking at that. I love that. I love that. And then moving on to foot, through the football, you know, you, yeah, Cardiff, yeah. I mean, we said about Brighton and um, you've moved around the country quite a bit. Uh, always come back to, back to Wales or is, Wales has always been part of your, how long has Wales been in your life? Okay. Wales, since we moved, since we moved to Cardiff, yeah, we haven't we haven't moved, and obviously I've had I've been in back in London, yeah, where, where I obviously we we still had the house here, but I rented a place in 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 London as well, um, and and Coventry, yeah, but, um, and Grimsby. So, but we stayed here because the because I think you know when you kid when, when when your kids are a lot younger, it's a little bit easier. To move them but i didn't want to unsettle them in terms of their education so yeah. much and, and and also we 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 have a passion for living here we we, we love we love south wales we got awesome. some great we got some great friends um and we, we're just really really happy here and and my wife's a real um scarborough girl from from the north and to, oh, to get somebody like that from north yorkshire yeah, to south even like wales it. Really, yeah. is quite a thing, but she absolutely loves it. Awesome, yeah. that's awesome. Because I, I, I've, I've actually cycled through Scarborough um, many a times ago, and I absolutely loved it. I loved it up there. It was uh, such a lovely place. But it's yeah. great. You do feel that down here, and 
It is quite yeah. a special place like that. And what? And, and and nowadays, obviously, I've seen some great stuff moving. You know, so moving into the business way, you know, you're in the global sports. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah. Well, that that, that kind of obvi- obviously, um, I'd lost a position uh, at uh, Grimsby Football Club, which yeah. I'd, I'd been at twice, um, and. You know, I got to know a few people in, in and around uh, Cardiff, Penarth area, um, and bumped into a guy called uh, Jason Dunlop, who asked me to go and uh, look, because our two daughters played um, football together. In, but he's, in he's just, he's there. he is famous as well, man. He's been on the Crack On podcast too, mate. So he is famous. He's Everyone famous. <laughs> he's, Jason, Honestly, yeah. he's a great, no, he's a great, he's a great fella. Him. And we get, we get, we, the great thing is, again, you, I mean, we chalk and cheese in terms of probably what we like and what yeah, we've yeah, done, yeah. But, but we get, we get on very, very well. Yeah. Our two daughters played football together and he, he asked me to look at a couple of projects. Um, so you met then, you met, met, you met Jason on what, the side of the pitch watching each other, uh, your daughters. Yeah, play. yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Yeah. Yeah. We were watching a football match. The girls were playing and he, yeah. he asked he asked me, didn't he, about the, the the football? What what's what what's the what's the most important thing? What, what, what about the game on the on, on the Saturday? What, what what's the most frustrating thing? Sorry, he said, and I, yeah, I said, yeah. and twenty thousand other people think they can do the job better than you. <laughs> and to, to every hey, to every fan will love this. He said they can't all be wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet yeah. I'm surprised you didn't you didn't shit him, mate. To be honest, oh, he was close. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Oh, he, had to man the, he had to man the lifeboat, so so I, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, he had to go run. He had to go yeah. run on the lifeboats. I'm glad yeah. he did, because otherwise he'd be a swim by you, I think. I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself, John, if somebody <laughs> was prowling out there and Jace was <laughs> horizontal. Yeah. Well, that's a nice thing. That's the way the relationship started then. And then what? Yeah. Just sort of ideas came together. How did it all work yes. out? I, I, ideas came together because he's he's very strong on 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 data. Yeah. Um, so we started looking at uh, data in sport. We went to see a, a QC in, in London that he'd done some work with. Yeah. Who said, "Gentlemen, you're absent." To my, to my, <laughs> to my kind of like amazement, <laughs> Data Jace was right. Yeah, yeah, Data and, and, Jace um, was right. And uh, the QC totally agreed with him. We 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 got a partnership uh, with them, and since then we've been on board in uh, a lot of players because it does appear. Uh, from a, a legal point of view, um, that, that uh, players, um, all players and, and managers and coaches and, and probably even referees, uh, data going back six years, that, that there could be a claim for the misuse of it. We all have data rights, obviously, yeah. but it's how those rights have been used and and probably abused in, in many ways. So yeah. uh, without the consent of the individual. So we, we, we've, started, we've started a project on that. We've got about 800 players at this moment in time, project's going very well. Um, and we're looking forward to helping the players. And, and my passion for it is it, it is a short, it's a lovely career. It's a great journey, but that journey can sometimes be very short, could yeah. only be eight or nine years for one reason or another, loss of form or injury or, or whatever it may be. Um, and we need, we need to look after those guys because there is, there is life after football. There is life after sport, not just yeah. football. Yeah, and I think, look, I think it's a really exciting project, mate. You, you know, obviously, I, I know all about it, and I think it's a really exciting project. What a, how have you found, you know, managing managing clubs to actually jumping into that world? How have you found that transition? Well, the one side of it is very, very straightforward, John. Working right. with the players and, and 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 that trust with the players and that I think honesty. That's the word, mate, isn't it? It's the word yeah. trust. You trust, trust. your team and you trust your yeah. it's the trust yeah. element. That's what you've got in abundance, haven't you? That's what I've got, and and they will talk. They will. I'll, I can talk to them, and they'll give me the time of day. They'll pick the phone up. In fact, Paul Wilkinson says I have never known a manager where who makes a call to another manager, and within within an hour, half an hour, somebody's back on the phone to him. Yeah. So so I mean that's a, that, that that's a lovely thing. Uh, not something I particularly realised, but actually they do get back and. And, and very much the same with the majority of the players, particularly the ones I, I've known even a little bit. We'll yeah. get back and we try to we explain to them this is an opportunity, you know, where, where we can help you um, yeah. moving forwards. And um, yeah, 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 they, 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 they're getting a real understanding of it now. 
and, and they do see it. Whereas probably there was an ignorance before, not, not understanding it with all the, the data, the, the tracking data and the, the data that goes out to all these companies, gaming companies, betting companies with, without their consent. Yeah, look, I think it's I think it's amazing. But what you, something you just said then about the trust element and the what is big within that, and and there's loads of years you've worked so hard at is your reputation, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's, it's to do. You can't you can't kid a changing room. No, I see. You it. can't, John. No, people, the, the, the co coaches, players would suss you out in 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 no time at all if you were a fraud. Yeah, yeah, and and they're not yeah, lightly. Yeah, they're not lightly to to either listen or take on board or to deliver or give everything for a fraudster. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're only going to do it for somebody they they believe in as well. And I think that's so so important. Yeah, but you said that you're now dealing with QCs and you know you're dealing with different people in different ways. How have you yeah. found that part of it? Yeah, I I I, I think just being on, honest with them and. Bringing, bringing the reality of what happens in a football club and within that industry to enlighten the guys and to help them on that journey. That's what I feel, just to help them and to cultivate that as, as we move forward. Give them an understanding because I know, you know, unless you've been right in it, right in it and, and, and know what's happening, it's very, very difficult to... To, to have that complete understanding. And, and that's what I hope I give them is that. 100%. You know. 100%. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Again, I haven't told you much about it, but we're going to find out now. I lost a business about four years ago. And I think unless you know and been through that moment where you've got to tell your wife you're going to lose your house, that moment is a very, very tough, tough moment. And I think you've got to be there to really appreciate it. And if yeah. you haven't been there, then I think it's, you know, it's like yeah. yourself being in the industry as long as you have been. You've seen so much. And that element is, like I said, I think that is gold dust, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, abs absolutely. Absolutely. And, and th that's when you then, you've got, to, you've got to wait, you wake up in the morning, John. Yeah. And you've got, you, instead of, you see, I, I see in life, there are problem makers and there are problem solvers. Love that. I'm going to use that as a quote. I love that. Carry on though, because I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think there are energizers and energy sappers. Yeah. So that's how I, you know, if, if you want to be very broad with it, that's how I categorize. Now, I, I, I like to think I'm an energizer and, and I'm a problem solver. OK, we've got an issue here. Well, how, how do we get around it? Rather than thinking we've got an issue, let's forget it. It's, it's not done. You can't do you can't do that in football. If we're having a problem breaking the back four down, well, what, what do we do? Do we just take the ball and go, oh, no, we've got to find a way. We've got to find a way of breaking that back four and their resilience and and, uh, and winning a football match. And so we, on that one, just one last question on that, because we're going to go to the final three in a minute, Russ. So on that, yeah. you've got into a club. Again, not naming clubs, not trying to brag people out. You've got into a club. You've got a lot of energy sappers. How do you work that? I'll get rid of them. Right. Oh, right, it's simple. Energy, energy sappers in the end, in yeah. the end, as a player or whatever, if they're draining the group, if they're draining the group, yeah, then that th you've got to get, they've got to go. But if, but if that energy go. sapper is the leader of the money, then it's never going to work out, is it? No, it's not. No chance. No, no they've got to go. Yeah, you may as well say I've got to go and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no grey area there for me. No, no, no. And that's such a powerful place to be. I think in life generally, that is exactly where yeah. you should be. Yeah, and it's interesting. The, the only difficulty there, John, is sometimes they're on a contract which you know they're yeah. quite happy. They're quite happy to see out. Yeah, of course, of yeah, course. Yeah. Like I said, you've got to find those out pretty quickly, haven't you? And then get through yeah. them. So I'm going to go through last few questions, Russ. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, mate, and I, I, I've, I've loved. I, I, you know, I think me and you, we, we met for the first time last week, and I, I we're going to get on really well. We will get on really yeah. well. And we do yeah. now. Um, it's like as though I've known you for a long, long time. To be honest, um, <laughs> good. Okay, three non-negotiables in Russell's life. Ross, to, to enter into Russell Slade's world, what are the three non-negotiables? Um, trust. You've got, to, you've got to be trustworthy. Yeah. Whatever you do, you've got to be trustworthy and honest and be the very best version. And, and the second bit, work hard and be the very best version of yourself. When you wake up in the morning, yeah. it's, it's nobody else's fault. If if I if I wake up and I'm grumpy in the morning, that's my fault. 
Yeah. W- wake up and be the very best version that you possibly can. Well, 100% have. accountability in that, Russ, is what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, What's absolutely. And do you know what? I'd like to put, you. this would be different to anybody else has done. Yeah. My third one will sum everything up. Oh. It's a poem. Okay, love it. Go okay, on. I know, no, I'm not going to read it out, but I'm going to tell you it's by, but it's okay. called The Man in the Glass. The Man so, in the Glass. Okay, by, by Dale Wimbrow. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And unless, and, and, and it's a life thing. And what it is, really, it's a beautiful poem, and he talks about the man in the glass. In other words, when I look in the mirror, can I smile? Am I happy with the man, that, the reflection that I see yeah. before I go out in the morning? And if you can do that, if you can pass that test, if you can pass that test over time, then you're doing all right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And is that how you're doing life? And I used to put it up. I used to put it up. Um, well, the in, mirror, in, I can in, see three mirrors front. behind you, mate. So you better get behind that one and look in the mirror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. The thing is, this is a good one. I love that as well. I am going to, after this, get on that. This is a good one. Biggest life lesson so far. Don't waste a second. Love that. Because, you know, this world's lost Howard Kendall. This world, for me personally, has lost my dad. Yeah, you can't wait when you wake up. You can't waste a se- don't don't waste a second. I think we, you know, we spend a third of our time working. We we spend a third of our time asleep. Yeah, please don't waste it. Don't 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 waste a second doing the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a really good one. I don't know if you've seen it on the unit. The Muhammad Ali when he talks through. Love it. Of time. Yeah, that is such a powerful one, isn't it? You know that. Yeah. You know, we go to school for this length of time. We're traveling for this length of time. You know, time is, is precious, man. I love that yes. one. That one's a great one. Yeah. So if you had the chance to go back and uh, and speak to an 18-year-old Russell Slade, what advice would you give him? P- pretty much, pretty much that really is, I, I give him the poem. Yeah. Would you change anything? Would I change anything? Would I change my journey? That's a really good question for me because of the kind of different journey that I've had. Yeah, John, would, would I would, would I would I change? Would, would I have changed that exp- experience of going to the first one? Is you see, would I would I change that and go, going into a football club directly and playing rather than the four years? That's that's a real tough one for me, yeah, and okay. I don't well, really know the answer to that. Then. All let I can say play. is, what what I can say is. That four years did prepare me for management. Okay, yeah. So it, 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 yeah. Part of your journey. Let me ask you another question then. That is related. I didn't to- know I was going into management at the time. So no, no, you wouldn't have known. So that, that would your eighteen-year-old self read that poem? Yes. You would have. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. That's great then. If if that was put in front of me, yeah. When I was eighteen, yes, that had been on my wall in me digs. Brilliant. Well, that's going on yeah. my wall. When I get when I read it, I'm going to print it out and put it on my wall, mate. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You'll Russell, love it, honestly. No, I, mean, I, I totally agree with you. I can't wait to get it on. And I will yeah. share it as well. But, Russell, yeah. I've had, thank you ever so much. Bank holiday Monday, taking your time out to talk to me. Um, and I love the fact that you've done that. And you're an absolute crack-on legend in my eyes. <laughs> so someone who just gets on with it, smile on his face. And I love that. So I really appreciate it, Russell. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Enjoy talking to you, John. Yeah, Thank great. you very much. Look after yourself and good luck with your project. Good luck. I know Thank it's you. going to be a massive success for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> really enjoyed that myself, you know. I hope you did. Some of the things that Russell talks about, I think with age, you know, his ability to be able to man manage people and talk to people at a level. It's just a prime example that we are all people at the end of the day. And yes, he's going into a data world and there's a whole new you know, really exciting space that he's going into. But the lessons learned for people are that people count, people matter. And you've got to be able to talk to people in such a way that you can get results. And he's done that all his life and all his career. I love what he said about his dad, the lessons from his old man, um, and so many different gems from that. But I really hope you got a lot from it as well. And I really hope, if you liked it, subscribe to the, to the YouTube channel. Uh, just comment, leave some feedback, send me some personal notes, do whatever you want. But more importantly, if you've got something in mind you want to do, get on with it. Stop procrastinating and crack on and get it done. 
because that's exactly what you've got to do in life is move forward every day. Such a good one. Loved it. On to the next series, series three. Here we come. I'm really excited to bring that as well. So anyway, thanks for all your support. In series three, we're going to have a sponsor, which I'm really chuffed to, to announce very soon. But anyway, have a great one. Have a cracker. Crack on.